singers help us go another mile the church will triumph oh Lord we're going home a little while it'll be worth it after all child it'll be worth it after all After all of your climbing, you'll hear Jesus call. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of your climbing, it'll be worth it after all would you stand and shake hands with somebody when you're down in the valley prayer is all I can do ah oh, Jesus since deliverance and he'll strengthen you when you're up on the mountain, you see me struggling alone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift my name up to Jesus. Let's help each other make it home. Thank you, Jesus. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all after all of your climbing we're going to hear Jesus call he'll be worth it after all child he'll be worth it after all after all of your climbing It'll be worth it after all. After all of your climbing, it'll be worth it after all. You better stretch where you sit down. I feel Pat Hayes anointing. I've got over 50 verses tonight. So, I'm glad you're fasting. Shoney's going to be close before you leave tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Love the Lord. Appreciate everybody being here. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. I enjoyed Sunday night. I am enjoyed Sunday night. Amen. We broke a Pentecostal record, 12 sermons in two hours. I got some nuggets. It's just some good, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I'm not a preacher of gloom, but listening to the news and folks that's running, I'm so glad the government's on his shoulders. <laughs> Can I have an amen to that? I am so glad that he's a wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, and the government rests on his shoulders. So we're going to be all right, whatever. We're just going to be all right. Hallelujah. Lord, please, please come in this house. 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 Please come in. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Mark, the 8th chapter, and the 22nd verse. And the harder you pray, the faster I can preach. I have a word tonight for... When, he, when Sheila and I, and the boys used to evangelize, 
I, I tell them all the time, I said, if, if we go and just have a good little revival, encourage the people, I said, it's been a good meeting. I said, but if I can help that pastor, if I can encourage him and strengthen him, then after we're gone, this revival will live on. And I love preachers. I mean, and, uh, it's the greatest life and the loneliest life. It's a life with the highest mountains, and it's got to be the deepest valleys. And uh, we uh, just listen to one or two preachers here lately, one of the real well-known ones. I don't know, just my heart's kind of been troubled. But I've got no stones to throw at them. I just like for a burden to pray for them. So many of the ones that's reaching masses have become sidetracked. And I think I found one of the answers, and I pray we'll leave this place. I pray you'll leave here tonight with a burden for me, and with every preacher in this building and in this church, this ministry, in this county, this town, this state. Mark 8, 22. And he cometh to Beth, said I. And they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. When he had spit in his eyes and put his hand upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. What do you see? What do you see? He looked and said, I see a man as trees walking. He put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Every time I read of this town, this particular town, four or five places, I find it tied in with ministry. I find in Mark 6, 45, another time when straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship, go on the other side. I find it again in Mark 8, 22, when they bring a blind man unto him and he's ministering and he besought him to touch him. I find this same town in Luke 9 and 10. The apostles, when they returned, told him what they had done. This is this town that Philip's from, and it's where Andrew and Peter, this is their hometown. So surely this town has something to do with the ministry, with ministers, with preachers. Surely it has something to do with them. So, so they, in this town here was something to do with the preaching, with ministry. They bring a man to him. How can he preach except he be called or except he be sent? Except the Lord touch him. It's not enough to come out of college with a doctor degree. It's not enough to be mama called and daddy sent. We need the hand of God to touch us again. Yeah. Preachers can get away with what others in a profession can't. I wouldn't want no doctor operate on me that decided last night to be a doctor. I wouldn't want no doctor to operate on me that had been in school a week. I wouldn't want no doctor to operate on me that wouldn't sincere and believe in what he was doing. First, first Timothy 3, 6, not a novice, at least being up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. God called David, and then he sent him through a school of hard knocks. J J Jerry, somebody asked me yesterday about the, the ministry, and we were talking, and they said, well, what was your school and what was your background? I said, traveling. Well, what was your training to be a pastor? Traveling. I said, watching how pastors loved their sheep and mistreated their sheep and were kind to them and were unkind to them, thankful for them and unthankful. I said, it, made, it taught me how to love people and appreciate people. So God calls David and he, don't, he calls him, this, the prophet anoints him. He don't go to the, to the pulpit that day. He sends him through a season of hard knocks. He calls Joseph, then he sends him to prison to learn to love. He calls Saul of Tarsus, then he goes into the deserts to unlearn a lot of religious stuff. David could have killed Saul, but he knew he was not ready to lead God's people. Mm. There they was a, in fact, it was Daniel and Shalom we'd met with them and doing marriage counseling, left Cleveland, get back late that night, and there a horrible wreck up here at the, the little green fence and the vehicle had rolled over a man. He was just, he's bleeding everywhere. And uh, Harold was rescued. Harold knew me. And the uh, rescue, the, the ambulance workers hadn't got there and didn't look like the man was going to live. And, and Harold came over and he said, he folk get it. And he said, he said, Randy, will, will you pray for him? He said, he said, all I ask is when the crew gets here, you get out of the way. I said, Harold, if you let me pray when they get here, I'll get out of the way. And I get down and I'm praying and, and, 
And I could tell by his breath he wasn't ready to, to leave this world. He'd been drinking. And I'm begging God to let him live, and I'm trying to talk to him. He's bleeding everywhere, and she had bought me a new pair of shoes. And two or three days later, I'm praying for the guy, and I look down, and his blood's all over my shoes. And, and I hear it, if I've ever heard, and it wasn't audible voices in my spirit, I hear the Lord whisper to me, you can get somebody's blood off of your shoes, but how do you get somebody's blood off of your hands? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you turn around and preach, preach to one person, tell them, be careful how you treat people. Hallelujah. We ought to be kind to people. Proverbs 6, 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Hallelujah. 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 Too many times the pulpit's been hurt, used to hurt and to wound and to bruise. But it ought to be a place. The name of Jesus ought to be a bomb in Gilead. The name of Jesus, hallelujah. I don't believe there's no other group that's more guilty than us apostolic or Jesus folk. We, we don't hardly have mercy on anybody that's not just like us. But when I read about my Jesus, I got, got one of the most precious phone calls last night from a little, little, little preacher in, in, up, in, up in Canada. He said, Brother Wynn, I've been listening to you for over five years. And they'd wrote and sent an offering from Canada. And a seasoned, seasoned preacher. And he'd, he'd been, a, been, been Amish and then Mennonite. And he said, when I, when I found Jesus and I walked away, he said, I'm from a large family. And he said, when I put rubber on my vehicle, when I left the old metal, he said, everybody's turned on me. He said, they say they love Jesus, but they hate me. And he said, how can we love Jesus and hate people? Can I preach in this place? It doesn't matter how we preach from the pulpit. It's what's in here that's really making a difference. Hallelujah. I wish somebody in the building would say, Lord, don't let me get nobody's blood on my hands. Don't let me. I'm not just talking to preach. I'm talking to you, saints. You ought to be careful. It'd be better that a millstone was tied around your neck and you just cast out into the sea to defend one of these little ones. Hallelujah. Everybody's not just like you. They don't live like you. They don't act like you. They don't dress like you. They don't worship like you. They don't lift their hands up like you. But Jesus loves them. And Jesus knows their name. And Jesus cares about them. And it would have been better that you'd never been born than to, than to face eternity with somebody's blood on your hands. And I'm preaching a serious sermon in this place tonight. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. When you make any prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Your hands are full of blood. Your hands are full of, Lord, I don't want nobody's blood on my hands. So they find this guy, he's called a ministry. They bring a blind man and they besought him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand. They, number one, they bring him to Jesus. They, he goes to the altar. He's in church. He gets under conviction. He feels a desire to be used of God and anointed. And he comes to the altar, and he asks Jesus to touch him. And the sweet master reaches down and touches a precious vessel. The man gets a real touch, but he was not changed. We have ministers in this country. I, I believe we have some, some, some that, that, that are standing major positions of ministry. I believe they've had a real touch somewhere in their life, but I am not sure they stayed in this altar long enough to let that touch change them. Hallelujah. We don't, we, we don't just need a touch. We need to be changed. How, how can I help others if I'm not changed? How can I deliver others if I'm not changed? How can I give hope to others if I'm not changed? Jesus reached down and touched him, and he began to lead him. He led him outside of the city. The man gets a real touch, but he is not changed. Pharaoh was touched, but he was never changed. Peter was touched, but he wasn't changed until after the death of Christ. Hallelujah. That's the reason. That's the reason. I'm not giving up on you. I'm not giving up on this one. I'm not giving up on that one. Because Peter didn't turn around and threw in a 
half years. And if Peter was in the total visual presence of Jesus and he didn't turn around and the Lord had mercy on him, throw me away if you want to. I believe this same Jesus, if I'm trying and if my heart's seeking him, I believe he's going to have mercy on me and help me. And I wish I had a worshiper in this building. I wish, hey, 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 go ahead and throw me away and mark me off. Hallelujah. But if my heart is toward him and I am sincere and I am trying, I believe this same Jesus, hallelujah, that looked at Peter and said, I'm praying for you. You're going to be converted, oh boy. Hallelujah. There's a Holy Ghost is going to fall on you and you're going to be changed. Hallelujah. I had an old, I had an old 1950 Ford truck and in the wintertime it was six volt and it wouldn't crank when it got real cold. And somebody told me I could change the alternator and I could change some things and I could convert it over. Hallelujah. Some of us have been running six volt for Jesus and we can do pretty good in warm weather. But don't throw me away. I know there's some cold spell coming, but the master knows how to convert us. It's better. Quit beating yourself up. Well, I wish I was doing more for God. Well, I wish we all was. But I'd rather grow slow and have a good foundation than outgrow everybody and not last very long. When, I, when Sheila and when I started in the ministry, I preached my first message in 79, quit my job in 83. There's, there's, there's young preachers beside me. I'm preaching to 30. They're preaching to 300. We'll get around. I'm talking about people on the altar. They're talking about their offerings. I won't talk about my offering. My offering was $12. My offering was $20. They're bringing, oh, I got up and I took, I got 3,000, I got 4,000. I'm preaching to 300. And I just said, over oh, our loving the Lord, you know. But here we are 30 years later, about one or two of them left, and I'm still plowing on. Hallelujah. I'm growing slow, but I'm still growing. How, quit beating yourself up. How, these big trees, that's the reason winds come through, and that's the reason we lose so many pine trees. And, 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 and that's the reason power lines get tore down in McMinn County. Our pine trees don't know how to grow roots. They can grow 70 foot tall. They can grow big branches and big limbs. Our little old pine trees don't know how to grow roots. If they could grow some roots, when the storm would come, they would still be there. If they could grow some roots, hallelujah, when trouble comes, it hey, hey, may not be outrun there, baby, but they believe there's some folk in the building tonight. I don't believe you by accident here. to Tell the devil I'm putting some roots down, but I'm fixing to reach out on my branches. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would say that out loud. I'm getting some roots down. I'm learning to pray. I'm learning to get a drink when it's dry around me. I'm learning to hold on. I'm learning to trust. I'm learning to seek the Lord. I'm learning to persevere. I'm learning when I've done all I can to stand. I'm learning to stand. I'm getting some roots down. And when it's my time, I will bloom. And when it's my time, my leaves will come out. And when it's my time, my leaves will grow. Mm. Let it grow slow. Allow, in the process, allow ourselves to be changed. Because you can only, some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. One preaches Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the others of love, knowing that I am sent for the defense of the gospel. One brother was telling me, he said, was in a meeting, said the fourth offering. Took up four offerings. Said the fourth offering. He said, bring me your biggest bill. He said, I want to take in my light bill. That's my biggest bill. Yeah. Another, another meeting in Virginia. Preacher's preaching wide open. He says, he stops. He says, wow, oh, I feel a prophecy for this church. Run up here and bring me $700. I got a word for this church. A friend of mine said, if I'd been there, I'd stood up and said, can I have a dollar's worth? <laughs> Some preach the gospel for the wrong reasons. But nevertheless, the gospel's preached, but somebody's going to preach it because they love Jesus. Somebody going to preach it because they love the Lord. Luke 6, 39. And he spake a parable of the man. Them. This, this is some rough stuff. Isaiah 56. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. I heard some of them today. I, I, one, and, I, and I just listened to them because I wanted to preach. This is burning in my heart. And one, one of them got right up close. And, and this is a guy that the world watches. That the world watches. And for 30 minutes, his theme was, God was I was in my prayer closet and the Lord spoke to me that there are going to be a certain amount of people that's going to send $243 today and God's going to bless you and turn your life around. And if you were one of the poor people, 
He didn't have a word for you. And if you were somebody on a certain level of income, this precious man didn't have a word for you. He only had a word for those that could bless him. Can I preach in this place tonight? The Bible called them greedy dogs, blind, leading the blind. Isaiah 29 and 10, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. He's closed your eyes, and the prophets and your rulers, the seer hath he covered. He touched him, and he let him out. How can, how can they free others if they've not been freed? And then he spit in his eyes. And any time I find stuff like this, it's humbling yourself. It's, 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 it's becoming gentle before the Lord. A certain ministry, I won't name names tonight, but this certain ministry, I just heard some, and Sheila, Sheila and I went. We're walking down this little sidewalk. We've seen bodyguards coming. And... They just started shoving us. Just, I mean, just shoving us. Can't you see? Can't I preach? Can't you see Peter and James and John, some little old crippled woman or some little old person trying to see Jesus? They take their hand and backhand them and get, get out of the way. Here comes Jesus. Friend, there was something different about the way Jesus walked. Hallelujah. I'm not so much worried about the Democrats and I'm not so much worried about the Republican, but if the ministry don't humble themselves before God, this nation's in trouble. And if, this, if the ministry in America will humble themselves before God, I don't care if Ahab gets elected, God will raise up an Elijah and he'll move for us in this country if we get the ministry praying again, if we get the ministry seeking God again, if you and I will begin to weep for the ministry again, I don't care if Jezebel and Ahab take over. If we can have an Elijah in the land, God will stand up for us. God will move for us. Hallelujah. We need to pray God stir the ministry in the America. Stir the ministry in America. So he spit in his eyes. It was humbling himself. He never had a lot of money. We went to one meeting. Third or fourth offering, we'd give too much. Our bill money. Preacher's walking out of life and he's, this is his statement. I don't think he ever went back to his meetings. I don't think so. This was his last statement. He turned, five or six hundred folk, he turned and grinned. He said, go eat your crystals if you want to. I'm going to eat me a T-bone. I thought, I guess you will, and I guess we will. You got all our money. I, I just can't see Jesus doing some of this stuff. Hallelujah. They need to be a humility. Come back to ministry in America. Ministry in America need to realize we're not Lord over God's heritage. We ought to be an example. There is no balance. There is no balance. Either, either they want the, 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 the preacher on food stamps and don't want him to have nothing, or either they make a king out of him. They won't let a preacher just find middle ground. But I believe we need some preachers in America that can find the middle ground and just be real people. Hallelujah. Would somebody lift your hands and say, not just miracle delivers tabernacle, but God stir the ministry in America. During this fast, I wish somebody would get a burden to pray for some ministries in America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, what, one ministry went to Israel on a, on a trip, and he, he, he flew one of his people over to check out the hotel to bring pictures back of the hotel. And he took widow's money, and he took a little, little money that was sent into the ministry, spent $24,000 on curtains for a seven-day stay in a hotel because he didn't like the color of the curtains. Hallelujah. Can you not imagine Jesus when he was born in a stable? Can't you imagine Jesus spending widow's money to change the curtains because he don't want to sit in a room seven days. Somebody's getting mad, but stuff like this needs to preach. They need a humility back in America. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not a pope. Hallelujah. We're little old Pentecostal preachers full of the Holy Ghost. We're not the preachers, not better. Nobody else is not greater. Nobody else. In fact, he's an example. He's a servant of the flock. Hallelujah. But you don't see this happening anymore. But if America's going to turn around, the Democrats are not going to do it. The Tea Party's not going to do it. The Republicans are 
not going to do it. It's going to be if the ministry will start praying again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not the little sheep. It's the preachers. The preachers have got to turn their hearts back toward God. The preachers have got to turn their desires back toward God. We need some preachers who will weep between the porch and the altar. We need some preachers who can see how close the return of the Lord is. We need some preachers that love souls more than money. We need some preachers that's afraid of hell. We need some preachers that fear God. We need some preachers that's not afraid to preach the Bible. We need some preachers that I say about We need somebody that'll get a bird back. Oh, we need some old fashioned preachers. And he touched him, but he wasn't changed. I'm preaching to me tonight. You can listen if you want to. I found something I want. Then Jesus asked him, said, what do you see? Yesterday is blind. He didn't see nothing. Now the Lord's touched him and he looks. I can see. I can see. What do you see? This thing spoke to my heart for a while now. I see men as trees. Sit there listening to one of these little men that I love and I pray for. Now, I'm not mad at him. I'm preaching. But I w- watched him where we, where we pay 100000 a year for TV time. These guys are paying $12 million and $15 million. They're, they're, they're touching the world. He sat there in 28 minutes and telling little, getting people laughing and all. This, this little sermon rolling over my heart, I thought, sir. You don't see, you, sh- you can't. I don't believe you see men made in their likeness in the image of God. I don't believe you see that soul that's going to heaven or hell. I'm, I'm afraid, and I don't deny your touch. I believe you've probably really been touched. I can see a part of you just genuinely loves Jesus. Hallelujah. But sir, do you see them as men or do you see them as trees? I see men as trees. It's cold weather. I see men. That man don't look to me than more than an old oak tree. I'll go down. I'll cut him down. I'll get him in my church. I'll get him to sell everything he's got and give it to me. I'll use him to help me and bless me. And when he, when I'm through with him, he'll be ashes and I'll throw him out and I'll get me another one. Can I preach in this house? Those preachers in America, they look at us and they don't see souls. They don't see precious people. They see men as trees. She said, I went to church the other day and she said, I went in her church and she said I walked in the vestibule and nobody spoke to me can I talk to young people and people in this church a minute she said I walked in and nobody spoke to me and I looked around and I tried to sit where and nobody invited me to sit down and I moved around two or three times and I looked around and I thought I don't fit here anymore she said I probably stayed 30 minutes I went and nobody spoke to me I left and nobody spoke to me it's been a month and nobody spoke to me it's not so bad to go to the beer joint and nobody speak to me it's not so bad to go to Walmart and everybody ignore me. It's not so bad to go to the job and everybody be having a hard day and everybody leave me alone. But I ought to not come to a house that loves Jesus. I ought not come to a house where the love of God is preached and somebody not hug my neck or somebody not speak to me. Hallelujah. Would somebody stand to your feet and ask the Lord, Lord, let the love of God be shut abroad at miracle deliverance. Oh, I'm preaching good in this house right now. I'm preaching good. He taught when somebody asks the Lord, hallelujah, they'll know that we're his disciples because we have love one to another.